All right, so uh, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about voltaic cells. All right, so what are voltaic cells? Well, basically, let me just make a note about voltaic cells. and Because what they're doing is they're taking chemical energy and they're taking the energy from chemical reactions and they're converting that energy into electrical energy. All right, so voltaic cells, that's what they do. They take chemical energy and then they convert it directly into electrical energy from the chemical reactions that are taking place. And so basically there's two chemical reactions that are taking place. And so let me give you the example of a copper zinc cell. All right, so this is a copper zinc voltaic cell. So one of the reactions, one of the chemical reactions is going to be occurring with copper and the other chemical reaction is going to be occurring with zinc. And basically this is how a voltaic cell is set up. So on one end of it, you have one half cell and the other end, you have another half cell. And so let's start with the first half cell. So we're going to start with the copper half cell. We'll just put the copper here. It doesn't matter uh, what side you put them on, but I like to put this one on the right hand side. So this is the copper half cell. And so a half cell consists of a few parts. And so the first part a half cell consists of is the stuff in there. And so this stuff is called the electrolyte. All right, and so depending on what your half cell is made of, you're gonna have a different electrolyte. So here, we want copper as our electrolyte. So it needs to be in the form of a solution. So you basically need copper ions. So we're gonna have copper, you could put maybe, let's go copper two sulfate. So SO4, copper two sulfate. So we know that this will dissociate and give us copper ions and sulfate ions. Now the sulfate ions don't really participate at all in the reaction, they're just there. All right, but the main thing that we're concerned about is these copper two plus ions. All right, and so that is called the electrolyte. And the next thing that we're gonna have at this half cell is we're gonna have something called the electrode. Okay, so this is called the electrode. And so the purpose of the electrode is to conduct the electricity. All right, so basically to allow electrons to flow through, we have an electrode there. And this electrode, we're gonna make up of whatever compound we have. So here we have a copper half cell, so we're gonna make this up with copper solid. All right, so we have a copper solid electrode dipped in a copper ion electrolyte here, and that makes up a copper half cell, okay? And the next thing you're gonna have is we're gonna have to actually connect this to something here, we'll talk about that in a second. And it's gonna connect all the way to this end because remember, this is only half, so the other half is gonna be the other half cell, which is gonna be your zinc. So we're gonna have another electrode here. Remember the name of that's an electrode. And so this electrode is gonna be made up of whatever the other half part of this voltaic cell is, which in this case is going to be zinc solid. All right, and its purpose is to conduct electricity, to conduct those electrons. All right, we're also gonna have some electrolyte in there as well, but this time the electrolyte might be made up of something like zinc. We could have zinc anything. You could have zinc nitrate, whatever you want. And so let's, uh, we'll have zinc nitrate here. And so we know that dissociates to be zinc ions and nitrate ions. And so the nitrate ions here again don't really matter. Just like the sulfate ions don't really do anything. Now they do the nitrate ions here. So we're only really concerned about the zinc ions there, okay? And so now what we're gonna need to do is connect these two half cells with something because this isn't a complete circuit. This is just half and half, all right? So we need to connect it. We're gonna connect in the middle here with something. Now this something has a name and it's called a salt bridge and sometimes it's called a porous boundary.
or a porous cup, something like that you might do. But the only purpose of that porous boundary, that salt bridge, all it does is it conducts, sorry, it doesn't conduct, it allows the transfer of ions. So I'm just gonna erase that. So it allows the transfer of ions there. Okay, so this porous cup allows the transfer of ions. All right, and we know which way these ions go, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but we know the whole purpose of this porous cup is to allow the transfer of ions. All right, and so now we look at this half cell. Now, there's electrons that flow towards one end of this half cell. And you kind of have to memorize this. Now, the electrons will always flow one way, and the electrons will always, always flow towards the cathode. Okay, so let's write that down down here. So, electrons flow to the cathode. Now, you just need to memorize that. Electrons flow to the cathode, all right? And so, how, which one's the cathode? Well, we also know that the stronger oxidizing agent will always be your cathode, okay? So, electrons flow towards the cathode, and we're gonna say the SOA, which is the strongest oxidizing agent. Now, you may remember this. You need to look on your table of oxidizing and reducing agents to figure out which one is the strongest. So the strongest oxidizing agent will be the cathode. All right, so electrons will always flow to the strongest oxidizing agent at the cathode. So in this case here, I go ahead and I look on my table and I find, now you can try this, you look on your table of uh, electrical, electrochemical potentials, and you'll find that copper is a stronger oxidizing agent than zinc. And so the electrons here are gonna flow through this wire towards the copper. All right, so electrons flow towards the copper, and that's fantastic. So now we know that electrons are flowing towards the copper, and that, that's kind of interesting because remember, remember our acronym, Leo the Lion says Gur. And so loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. And so we know that the copper ions are being reduced at the cathode because they're the strongest oxidizing agents. Okay, so the copper ions here will be reduced. All right, and that's very important. So we can come up with the chemical reaction that's taking place at the cathode. And that chemical reaction is going to be the copper ions, Cu2 plus, gaining electrons, so plus some electrons. Remember those electrons that are coming down through the wire into the electrode, touching this solution here and undergoing this chemical reaction. So we have copper ions plus two electrons giving you basically copper solids. Those are aqueous. Plus two electrons giving you copper solid. And that is a half reaction for the reduction or the gain of electrons in copper ions to become copper solid. All right, so you'll actually notice at the very tip of your uh, electrode here, this reaction's taking place, and you make it a little bit thicker, a little bit of copper there. Not too much, but maybe just a little bit. It might plate the copper on the end of the electrode there. Okay, and similarly at the other end, you're gonna have another half cell, but this time it's gonna be the zinc here, and the zinc's gonna be losing electrons because those electrons are f flowing uh, up from the zinc, away from the zinc, through this wire up here. So basically the half cell that's gonna occur there, or the half reaction that's gonna occur there, is gonna be zinc solid losing two electrons to become zinc ions. All right, so that's the half reaction there. And we know that this is creating an electrical potential because you're allowing the flow of electrons here and we know that this is going to be some sort of voltmeter all right and the electrons are flowing into this end and they're flowing out of that end and so basically that's how a voltaic cell works now a couple other notes is that the transfer of ions through the salt bridge you will always have cations flow towards the cathode so this is the cathode this is the anode, and so we know that cations will flow towards the cathode through the salt bridge, and anions 
will flow towards the anode here. All right, that's what completes our circuit. All right, so that's a basic voltaic cell, and it's an example of how we convert chemical energy into electrical energy.